Welcome, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. I'm so excited today because we are being joined after so long, our brother Thurston Gill. It's been a long time, and he's going to share with you today some of his story of what's been going on with him in the last, oh, I don't know how many months it's been, um, but I'm really excited to have him back on here with me again. And um, I think you're going to find this very beneficial, whatever he is going to share with us today. But uh, before we do all that, please like, subscribe, and share so that we can get this information out to more people. But you will, uh, YouTube will be a little um, nicer to us and push us up a little bit more so that more people will be able to see these um, these videos and discussions, and we want, want to really get this out to, to more people. So anyway, please do that now so you don't forget. I'll remind you again at the end. But anyway, Thurston, thank you. So good to see you again, brother. I am oh, really, be back. really miss our, our uh, discussions. And um, I know that you're going to make this really relevant to, uh, and you know, and really personal to it to your story but also we can relate to it and we will be able to relate to what you're going to share with us so um why don't we start out with just fill us in where you been what's going on i know you <laughs> you've been uh, going through some stuff <laughs> uh, yeah um it all began <laughs> <laughs> once upon uh, a time <laughs> once upon a time yes uh, actually, back in October of last year, uh, the 23rd, I had uh, eye surgery. Uh, the glaucoma condition I had been struggling with got to a point where medication could no longer manage it. And so it was advised that I have uh, eye surgery to replace the shunt that was already in my eye with a, uh, not replace it, but add another one to reduce the, the fluid pressure. The surgery went well. Uh, recovery process was going well also. But during that recovery period, I cannot stay still. So I continue to conduct my life as, as normal, as usual. And I decided to go on a walk with my two grandsons to Monocacy Creek. As we're walking along the creek, I apparently stepped on an area along the bank that was apparently a sinkhole. Yikes. And my foot went down in it and I mm -hmm. toppled over. That was the beginning of my crisis. <laughs> mm. uh, I wanted to share this because uh, when it comes to emergency preparedness, I think that many of us have in our mindset that we're preparing for this catastrophic event that causes our life to change so dramatically that we have to go off grid or you know, something of that magnitude. And to be honest with you, those aren't the type of crises that we deal with on a regular basis. And mm. when it comes to emergency preparedness, those are the things that we need to be preparing for. Those are the things that should be uh, constantly on our radar. It's not the, the world coming to the end so much, although the world as we know it will eventually hit in that direction, of course, mm -hmm. but it's the, it's the more common crisis that mm -hmm. we deal with. Injuries, loss of employment, uh, the death in the family, those are the things that happen every single day. Mm -hmm. So it was my turn. Mm. <laughs> it was my turn. And so uh, when, when I fell, uh, let me just say this. I felt and I heard my, my shin bones, my tibia, 
break. I heard it and I felt it break. And I knew I was not getting up. Uh. And in my spirit, it was so clear to me that my life will never be the same as a result. Now, I didn't take that as a hmm. as a net. Okay. I actually, in my spirit, it resonated as a positive because there's some things I was praying about about myself and, and about my family and, and things uh, needed to change, especially in me. Uh, I had been dealing with some issues in my, in my heart and in my mind, changing some thinking, habits, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. I was in that place where, and I think many of us can relate, where you're kind of like stuck and you're, you're praying to get through it. Yeah. It, it takes, it takes something in the universe to split <laughs> in order for uh, us to move forward. Like a bone? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Two bones? Yes, oh. exactly. Like a bone. <laughs> so to, to get back to the story, I, I knew I was in trouble. Mm. I also knew I had a very short period of time to call 911, call my wife, and get things rolling before the pain struck. Oh. And of course, we're blessed with the initial, being guarded from the initial trauma of pain with adrenaline dump. And you don't really feel anything initially. Mm. And it's the time that I knew, my mind was already set. I knew I had to make those calls, do what I needed to do, because I had no idea what level mm -hmm. of pain I had to deal with. Mm. So... Uh, once I got that done, I had my oldest grandson go up the 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 embankment up to the the parking area into the road to where EMS and, and law enforcement would, would respond to make sure that they can find me because we were we were like well off the beaten path, no. not easily to find, mm -hmm. and uh, somebody needed to be there to, to direct them. I had my youngest grandson focus on uh, securing my dog who was off leash at the time and was playing in the creek mm -hmm. uh, to for him so that he doesn't act crazy when the EMS gets there. So uh, to keep him under control. So now how old are, can I ask you, how old are your grandchildren now? Uh, my oldest is 16 okay. and my, uh, my youngest was 12 at the time. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and praise God, they they handled it well. Mm -hmm. Although my granddaughter, my oldest grandson, he doesn't agree. He he said he's not ventilating throughout the whole time until uh, he was not there. <laughs> but Aww. he did what I what I requested of him to do. No mm -hmm. questions asked, uh, and made it happen. No. And uh, my dog cooperated, even mm -hmm. though he really doesn't usually listen to my youngest grandson. But he cooperated, uh, according <laughs> to my grandson. Uh, he went into the creek and well, I think I lost you and brought it to me and set it by my hand. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Okay. So, um, so once that was done, then the pain mm. uh, came in like a flood, and it was interesting because <laughs> uh, next to my head was a rock. First of all, I thank and praise God that my head didn't hit it when I fell. Mm. But it was there. And I just like, God, I tell you, I had my arm around. It was I it was the very thing that I held on to the squeeze to endure the waves of pain. Uh. First of all, let me say this. I've been involved, I was a police officer for uh, back in the 80s, I, I was the EMT. I also worked as a first responder, a first medical responder, and I'm also a BLS, basic life support instructor for, for years. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen a compound fracture. Compound fracture is where the bone breaks, but part of the bone breaks through the skin so that the bone is actually seen through the skin. I've uh, never seen one. I've seen broken bones. I've seen 
limbs mm -hmm. deformed because you, they're obviously broken, but I've never seen a broken bone uh, broken through the skin. And apparently I had a, my first compound fracture. And let me say this, I did not see it. I didn't want to see it. I, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, when it comes to pain and things like that, I that's enough. <laughs> and I'm my, glad I yeah. my stomach is turning the whole time you're talking about this so and, my and, screen goes off my <laughs> camera you'll know it and uh and, and of course uh i can understand it but the the medical the the ems response the law enforcement response the bethlehem township uh, fire department uh, these guys were excellent uh, although somebody bumped into my 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 foot a, a couple of times, but I forgive them. They were trying to do what they had. <laughs> but especially the the paramedic, she was she was great. Huh. Um, the police officer that was there, um, he was very very uh, very supportive. Um, grabbed my hand. Um, as they were lifting me out, because it, where I was, it was it was down a ten foot embankment, oh, and it was not easy to get to, and uh, it was not easy to get up from, especially if you're the one on the gurney, um, being hoisted around with a broken leg. Yeah. So, uh, the police officer. He grabbed my hand. He said, squeeze my hand, squeeze my hand. He, he knew that I was in pain. Uh, I I did, uh, I, I just, you know, I had to weather through it. Um, wow. And just praising God at the same time. Uh, to give you an idea, when it comes to, to pain, I'm a bit uh, weird, I, I guess. But I understand that there are other people that are like me. <laughs> what I mean is, that I have a very high sensitivity to pain, which means that what you might not feel, I feel, but at the same time, I'm blessed with a very high tolerance of pain. Hmm. I deal with more pain than the average person, apparently. And that's what I've been told. Long story short, when they put me in the the uh, the rescue squad, the rig, uh, I think the protocol calls for giving me a dose of, I think it's fentanyl. Um, I think it's like 100 milligrams, I think, something around that, that nature. You know, you get medical approval first and, and the paramedic, and I told her when I first got it, I said, okay, you know, don't hold back on me. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot me up. <laughs> Shoot me up. Do what you gotta do. You know, she laughed. She said, okay, I'm gonna I'm done working on it. She has to get a medical approval from the the uh physician on the other side of the, the radio who gave approval and mm -hmm. she gave me the first dose. Well, typically speaking, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, after about a minute or two, if you don't feel a difference, they are authorized to give you another dose. Well, it was a minute or two, and I didn't feel anything. Mm. So she gave me another dose. Donna, after the other dose, I still didn't feel anything. Wow. And from what I understand, I had three doses by the time I got to the trauma center, where mm. uh, they not only treated the, um, the injury, but also they had to set the bone. The orthopedic sur surgeon had to set my, uh, not orthopedic surgeon, the orthopedic doctor had to set my bone, which was an, another painful experience. I had to pull it and, and put it in traction and, and what have you. Ay, ay, ay. Yep. And they wrapped it and put it in a soft cast. Now, <laughs> that doesn't end the, the drama. I didn't just break it. It was a fracture of of the smaller bone, and I, you know, I get these bones mixed up. I have to admit, anatomy wasn't my strong point 
in uh, the tibia and the fibula. The, the tibia and the fibula. The fibula is the smallest, and it just fractured. Mm. It's just a fracture. It was the tibia that was the one that was broken through. Yikes! And it was not only broken through clean; it was broken. It was pieces of bone inside, mm. and so on and so forth. Oh. The orthopedic surgeon was not on duty that day. It was a Sunday afternoon, a Sunday morning, early morning, Sunday morning, early afternoon. Mm -hmm. So I had to wait until the following day to actually have surgery. Mm -hmm. So all the orthopedic doctor was able to do was to put in a cast and wrap it up with all the pieces in there. Yeah. And yes, that began a night of uh, that was equivalent to a nightmare in terms of pain. Oh boy. Uh, I, they give you a scale of pain from one to 10, 10 being the worst, mm -hmm. one being the, the least. And I think they should change it, to be honest with you. I think that 10 should be, you passed out because of the pain. <laughs> Nine should be you're delirious because of the pain. And eight should be just, just before delirious. You just. <laughs> but I was at, uh, using their scale, I was at an, they were only able to get me to a nine. And that was with morphine and whatever else they used. Wow. And I know they were very limited in what they could use because I had to go to surgery the following morning. Mm. And um, if I'm not mistaken, you you're limited in the type of uh, especially morphine. I think probably yeah surgery. Yeah, I'm not very schooled on that, but I, I do have some a very limited knowledge. So that night, it was it was quite a struggle. I remember praying, oh, Lord, it's apparently you're not going to take this pain from me. Mm -hmm. and, you, and I said, that's okay, but I mm. have to know that you're with me. Oh, wow. And he was with me. Mm. That from the morning, from that Sunday morning until Monday morning, when I had the surgery, mm -hmm. I don't think I was able to really sleep at all. I think if I slept a minute or two, that was good. It was always uh, managing pain at a, at a, a nine. It was not a 10, it was, it was at a, uh, I would say it was at a nine. So I was just praying in tongues and, and just, mm. and just remaining in the presence of God to get through it. Mm -hmm. The next morning I had the surgery and I ended up with a rod and two screws for all my effort. And uh, I ended up in the hospital for three days. I One of the days was in, I spent Thanksgiving, my first Thanksgiving away from home in a hospital. Aww. And uh, yeah, and uh, it was quite, uh, quite interesting. Hmm. Um, so that was the crisis. And so pretty much the, the immediate crisis had ended. And so I was really in the recovery period from then on mm -hmm. or after the crisis. And the recovery process is getting yourself back to normal, which I'm still, I'm still mm -hmm. in the process of. Yeah. Um, and that was a uh, was and is a long story. Now mm -hmm. we've been talking about, and I've been in the in the let's say the business or the ministry of mercy preparedness for many years. Mm -hmm. And um, this this crisis enabled me to use some aspects of it that I did not or was not able to didn't have the opportunity to use before. Mm -hmm. and uh, ended up going into some of my emergency supplies as well. 
and uh, was my, probably a whole nother video, I think, I don't know. But <laughs> all I can say is, is, is this, is that our preparation is for incidents like these. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can, well, you, let me say this, during my recovery, I could not bear weight on my right leg at all. Mm -hmm. It took me a couple of days to even realize that my thigh, my whole leg was swollen. I'm thinking, you know, okay, broken bone, mm -hmm. you know, in the area where the bone break, broke, broke, yeah. I could see that, whatever. But my entire leg from foot to thigh was swollen. I'm trying to say, I'm, I'm asking myself, why is my leg, why is my thigh hurt, you know? Well, I found out later that in order to get the rod in my shin, the the entry point was through my thigh. So he cut through my thigh to get or oh, above yeah, the yeah. Yes. So you know that song, the thigh bones connected to the knee. Bones. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's why. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. So this recovery thing ended up being a lot more complicated than I thought. Yeah. And, um. So I couldn't put weight on my leg at all. Um. When you're told that you have a non-weight bearing limb, uh, to be honest with you, I, I until it happened to me, I didn't realize how life changing. Mm. that is mm -hmm. because you are relying on one leg as I'm keeping the other leg straight to move around to move about so I was bedridden for most for a good month mm. I wow. I would get up to go to the to the restroom but this is the thing, Donna. Uh, the the uh, occupational therapist and the physical therapist, as well as some of the nurses and technicians, they were they were surprised that I had the amount of upper body strength that I had in order to get up out of a chair. That mm -hmm. was the first. That was the first concern that I didn't have enough strength to get out of the chair because if I didn't then I wouldn't be sent home. I would go to like more like a skilled nursing or You're right. kind of um, um, rehab facility because mm -hmm. I could provide for my, take care of myself in that regard. But because I was able to do that, they were like surprised. And I'm wondering, what are they surprised about? What's the big deal? Well, yeah, um, yeah it is a big deal because yeah. people that can't, mm -hmm. um, that is like their first hurdle is being able to, and if you're older and it, it's it's monumental. So it, it took some time for that to sink in with me. Yeah. But even though I had the upper body strength, I didn't have the stamina mm. to go far. Mm -hmm. To go from my bed to my bathroom, I had to stage two chairs mm. because uh, when I was in the hospital, I was asked if I can go to the restroom on my own. And I said, yes, I can get up. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I went to the restroom. And uh, at that time, my daughter and my, and my wife were there. And also that the, the technician was there to help me. Mm -hmm. I got to the bathroom okay. But after I finished using the toilet or urinating, I passed out. Mm. Because I just did not have the stamina, yeah, the strength, yeah, to 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 do anything else. Well, and, and I all... just want to say this too, you know, just like for people who don't know you and are watching this, that this is Thurston's a big guy. <laughs> so, uh, yes, you know, he's got pounds. Um, yeah, you know, and tall, around. and that's and, why um, you know all those people so around him. And mm -hmm. you know, thank God for the, the 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 technician that was there because she. She didn't catch me. She just, she just uh, caught the blow. <laughs> you know, I fell on mm -hmm. on. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was it was crazy. I, you know, I just wasn't 
wasn't used to that. So I understood and the my uh, therapist, physical and occupational therapist understood in order for me to get out of that hospital, I had to work on building up my stamina for a couple of days. And so we worked on me walking from the bed to the hallway, mm -hmm. from the hallway uh, to the door of the hallway, from the door of the hallway, down the hallway until, and I had to stop whenever I felt lightheaded. Right. To, to get far enough where I knew I can, without passing out. Yeah, but that was a that was a challenge. I had to work up to that. Yeah, there, there are so many different like as you're talking, I'm thinking about all the different. Um, there's so many different compartments to, and things that, to you know, different stages of what you've gone through, and I'm thinking about, you know, it, the mindset you know, and the different mindsets that, yes. and, you yeah. know, the preparedness, the pain, the, the uh, realization that as you said in, in the beginning about how your life was going to change, even though you didn't say negatively, I mean, that's a, we could, that tells us what kind of mindset you had already before. Um, and so there, and, and going through that night before the surgery, I mean, I, I'm just like, I'm looking at each one of these stages and, and wondering, you know, because I like to ask, like, what were you thinking? What were you going through? What were you feeling? What was what was your what were your thought patterns? What were you, um, you know, what? Yeah, like what? So there's just so many stages of, of what you've gone through. And now you're in a you're in a different stage now because you're in this recovery and it's a long recovery. Um, and there's stages in that as well. It's exactly, it, it, exactly. So, you know, um, and I'm, I'm thinking of it from a, uh, an emergency preparedness standpoint, because that's who you are. That's not who you are, but that's what you do. And also though, from a human standpoint, you know, as, as a human being and having, you know, these emotions and feelings and being a man and, you know, just having everything in your world, just kind of like, nope, yes. stop, cut off, yes. literally. Yeah. Um, and how to handle all that. And, you know, I'm thinking, so, so I have, so I didn't mean to cut off your story. No, that's fine. Um, that's fine. But kind of, yeah, I, I kind of want to ask you, because I don't want to get too long because I, I know people's attention spans are really short these days. But um I want to ask you, like in each sex, um, in, in, in each section of things that were going on with you, some questions. So, first of all, when it first happened, I'm so happy that you weren't by yourself, first of all, because when you're saying that you were down this 10 feet down and maybe you know who would have found you there or you know how much longer you would have had to um <clears throat> deal with that pain and then all the anxiety of who's going to find me and all that but how so that first stage of of it happening tell us what was going I mean you did pretty much tell us you 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 held it together you knew you only had a certain amount of time before that pain set in so your background your understanding of that definitely had something to do with that so I would say that you were prepared that way right yes um and so I look at that and I say wow he handled that really well would I have been able to do that what I what would I have been thinking how would I you know how would I have reacted? Um, and when you then, so then it, then I look at, okay, so now the help's coming. So is the pain. How do I manage that? Um, how much of your preparedness, uh, whether it's mindset, physical, however you look at that, how much were you prepared to be able to handle that at that stage? That is a very good question because uh, there were the, the main issue that I struggled with in my mindset was 
I knew that I'm usually the rescuer. Mm. Now I'm being rescued. Mm. And I felt the that guilt. Mm. Like I'm putting all these people at risk. You uh -huh. know, for me. Um, what is my because my my mother in law had just gotten out of the hospital for from surgery as well. Mm. Uh, my wife had recently uh, gotten a pacemaker because of um, her heart condition. Mm. And now it's me. Mm. And it's like, I'm the one that usually is the rescuer. Mm -hmm. So that was... I have to admit that was the area where I had to learn to submit mm. okay. and understand that I need help. Mm. And mm. Uh, so I, you know, and for those, for those that know what I'm talking about, you know, people that are healthcare providers and, mm -hmm law enforcement and people that are caregivers. Mm -hmm. We are very difficult sometimes in being recipient of care. Mm -hmm. I had to mentally forced myself to be taken care of. Uh, you can only imagine the amount of friction that can be caused because you're trying mm -hmm. to do things on your own when somebody's there to kind of to, to help you. Um, I, I have to admit it was once or twice that my wife and I had mm -hmm. <laughs> clashed horns yeah. when I just had to say, and the Lord dealt with me mm -hmm. and said, let her do it. But she's, you know, she's having this problem and she she's having a problem with her arthritis in her knees and let her do it. And yeah. I had to learn to let her do it. Yeah, it kind of works on your pride. Oh, definitely. I mean, it it reveals it, and it's, and and I know that that's that's very that's extremely hard to do for people who have that mindset of caregiving and who really want to help be helpful to others. Um, and I'm experiencing that firsthand with my mom being a caregiver for her mm -hmm. on her end, and the struggle of getting older and dementia and, you know, and, but so, so being on the caregiver end of that is the, how much help do I give? How much is too much? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. the person who is struggling or who has the, you know, the problem, the, the injury, whatever is also dealing with I can still do this so you know so yes. those are so that's where the friction comes yes, in it does. It, it um, does. really hard it, I I get it. that I really do and, um, and so it took uh, months to for us to kind of develop this this synergy right that's a good word she understands what I can do and what I can't and, mm -hmm. and it had to begin with me I had to I had to yield yeah and so, so okay so let's so let's go to the the that night that you were um well anytime let, let's just say anytime i know that night before the surgery must have been like hell <laughs> with whatever that means to anybody um <laughs> that very i mean just yeah um w were there times of that you ever were like, I just can't do this. I'm giving up or I'm not giving up, but I just, I just can't do this. I, I don't, I can't handle this or you lost hope or, or do you feel like your mindset, because you have a preparedness mindset um, and you have, I know such a strong faith um, that that kind of took, took that away or I, how are you, how are you feeling? Were there any times that you felt you know, kind of hopeless. No. I, okay. Because 
and and it and and I have to give the credit to the Lord because because of the mindset, I understood that suffering, trouble, disaster, catastrophe, chaos, all those things we are created for mm. have been provided for. Mm, that's good. If we don't tap into that provision, that's on us. We can't wow. blame God. We that's what we are created for. That's mm. uh, it's sad if we've gone through the things that we've gone through throughout our lives. The good, the bad, the ugly. Mm -hmm. And we have not taken away from that the I don't know what we'd say, the the grit the resolve, mm -hmm. strength to deal with everything else that comes after that because mm. I believe we we're, were being prepared for those things. The Lord is not going to ever allow us to endure anything that we are not capable of handling without a way of escape. That's just how it is. Mm. There's always going to be an ability to endure it. It's... Um, Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say it's almost like it's a, a another level, a new level. Um, and I even think of like in my own life, like, and 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 I forget. Uh, this is me personally. I forget about all the stuff I've been through because sometimes yeah. when you are hit in the face with something totally out of the blue, so totally unexpected. Of course, that's what emergencies are. Um, and you forget about all the times that you've been through, but because this is new, yes, how do I handle this? Well, I'm not prepared for this, you know, but I, 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 um, I want to tell, I just want to say this, everybody that it, those of you who are, have been following us for emergency preparedness and, and, and been, you know, watching all those videos and preparing yourself that, um, this, this is what the mindset does for you yes. and um and this is a common thread through the interviews that i do with people on the other interviews that i do with people on my other channel and you know um that mindset is so important it's like been every it's a common thread absolutely mindset faith hope resolve perseverance it's 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 like a tapestry yes. you know that that's all woven together to hold us together to keep us moving forward yes moving forward that's yeah. that, i think that's an important understanding because these crises are not forever they mm. are temporary to move us forward even if it results in some catastrophic, let's say, uh, disability or so on and so forth, it still does not mean we don't move forward. Exactly. We move forward despite it. And if I lose my life, I still move forward despite it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's, it's not, I don't lose. It's all you here. Lose. <laughs> you know, we're and, more the conquerors through Christ. Yeah, and, and here's the other thing that's coming to my mind, I'm thinking too, is our hearts. So we can, you know, you, there, there are two ways that you, like you said, that you could have gone with this, like this whole long journey that you're going through all the pain, all the suffering, all the guilt, all that stuff that you feel in your head could settle in your heart. Yes. And you can, you know, do you ever like, oh, why did I go that day? Because we do that, you know, why did yes, I go that do. day? Yes, why didn't I go the other way? I If I hadn't done that, then this. And But the other thing is to, if we harbor those in our hearts, if we keep those in our hearts, it becomes harder and harder and harder, like a, a stony heart. Yes. Um, yes. And then it starts to affect yes. the rest of our lives and the people around us, yes. right? It does, it does. And that's the thing, see, we're, then we're thinking about the wrong things. Mm. The the thought of why didn't I go? Why did I go that way? Why did I do? Those are thoughts that we should have discarded. We should not be even thinking. It's already happened. 
how do we move forward? How how to be as as a um, the writer um, stated anti fragile. We we, mm -hmm. we have to learn how to use these things to become stronger, to become bigger, to become better, to be to move forward, not not to go back and overthink. And if I go mm -hmm. back, the only reason I go back is to figure out how could I have prevented this before. And one thing I did come out with. <laughs> <laughs> prevention is from now on i am no matter what i'm going hiking or walking along any kind of trail especially in pennsylvania sinkhole pennsylvania i'm going with a walking stick or a cane <laughs> so <laughs> that's one thing that i've learned yes okay. but other than yeah. that and by the way you remember you did a whole teaching i believe we had a workshop on it years ago on being anti-fragile yes or being fra right. what was the name of it i think i have it um we should put that up sometime yeah. or we talk about that but uh yeah well we can't be and, and, you know, and, and that thinking that type of thinking is is fragile thinking it's it's if you're going to do an after action review do an action action review, meaning, okay, you know what? I can do this better. I can, mm -hmm. you know, if I if I did it this way, yes, this wouldn't happen, this won't happen again, but also I can show other people that they can benefit from my experience. Oh, it's making yeah. it positive as opposed to, oh, oh, well as me. You know, well as me. me. Yeah, you like, know, yeah, that self-pity does nothing for you. And I want to share another thing before I forget. Mm -hmm. In the hospital, I got a visit from uh, one of the healthcare providers. And I forgot what her title was and I forgot her name, but she is, she works, I think she still volunteers at EMS, but she was specifically there to share the uh, mental health recovery services. Mm -hmm. And she shared that you know, many people think that the post-traumatic stress and and, and uh, mental distress are only as a result of something happening catastrophic, like an airplane crash or something like that. Mm -hmm. And she said, but many people don't realize that even just a, a common injury um, like yours, um, people end up with um, dealing with uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome. Mm -hmm. And, you know, make you aware of the services. And, you know, she, she, uh, the light bulb went off in my head because I was getting flashbacks mm -hmm. of my fall. Mm -hmm. Falling, the snapping, the feeling mm -hmm. of the bone breaking. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I wasn't, it wasn't tormenting me, but I still would get them. Um, didn't bother me much because I, and if I, if I had seen it, if I looked down and seen it, I think it would have been a different story. <laughs> but I guarded my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> didn't want to see anything. I didn't even want to see the x rays mm. when the orthopedic uh, 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 doctors were trying to get me this, you know, see was done. I said, no, nope, that's fine. I'm, I'm good. I think if I saw it, it would have been different. Mm. But yeah, I had flashbacks. Yeah. But I think the thing that most impacted me is I had these periods where I would become emotional. I I'd, I'd start um weeping and I just felt sad. And mm -hmm. it would just come out of left field. I'd just be thinking of, you know, my family or something. I just I just start mm -hmm. Yeah. And it happened for about a month or two. Hmm. And I had to realize, you know, she was right. Mm -hmm. It's the first time I, I, at least I'm mindful of the fact that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with some of this, um, mm -hmm. this uh, uh, PTSD. Yeah. Because so, we're, our bodies, we, we, our bodies store our trauma. We, mm -hmm. it stores within our bodies. And um, that's actually one of the things that I'm um, 
going to be doing in the near future is and using the vehicle of dance to mm. uh, help heal the and release the body trauma um wow that people and we you know the emotions that we have and 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 you know at least you are aware of that and you're dealing with it yeah. because we all have stuff that we've held inside of us since we were children yes, and absolutely. even generations past that until until we realize that and work through it it's going to remain there. And that's where all sicknesses come from and disease and because the body holds it. Yeah. So it manifests. Uh, it does. It does. Yes. Manifest. And, and so, yeah. you know, most and, and, you know, especially if you're a caregiver or a rescuer, healthcare mm -hmm. provider, you know, you don't you don't share that stuff. And it's important to share. Um, and every opportunity that I talk about, I talk about it. If it's nothing else, it, it helps me, but it also enlightens other people to understand that when you see these, these symptoms that occur, you become irritable, um, can't sleep, you have these flashbacks, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's what you're going through and you need to talk about it. You need right. to talk about it. Right. You need to pray about it mm -hmm. and, and, and get it through. And I think my situation, at least with the emotional part, is my struggle with being the rescuer having to be rescued mm -hmm. and well i see i see something developing for you in the future <laughs> <What's that? laughs> as far as that group of people we did oh. do a video and we did remember we did a yes, video did. a discussion on recovery, on recovery and sure um, recovery exactly yeah so um well <clears throat> I want to, I think we have to, we're going to wrap it up now, but is so closing words, anything that you want else that you want to share? Um, well, I, you know, again, I'm still in the recovery period. I, I graduated last week from a Walker. I still am, am in a boot. I graduated mm -hmm. from a Walker to a cane. Okay. And this week, I'm learning to depend less on the cane and walking with the boot. So the recovery process continues. Mm -hmm. And I also learned of something very important, too. Because what would bother me is that I've been home for months and I'm saying, I could have written three books by now and I could have done this and done that. And, you know, <laughs> the Lord had to smack me upside the head again and says, this is a time for recovery. Mm -hmm. I did not realize, you know, again, I've ministered to people. I, I have people in my family have gone through injuries like this, not understanding the, the, the total dynamics that are involved in this healing recovery process. The amount yeah. of energy it takes to heal. Mm -hmm. That was another reason why I didn't have stamina because my body was redirecting a lot of energy just to heal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The swelling, the reconnecting of the nerves that were cut through. And right. it's like. Yeah, we have, we have to give ourselves. The recovery, yes. And it's just, very, we have, for those of us who, because I'm one of these, that do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to come to a place where we can just sit. Yes. And yes. be happy, not, I don't use happy. I hate to use the word happy. Um, be satisfied with where we're content with where we are and just be, even if that's what, like, I'm going through anger right now. I, I'm angry right now about this or whatever. Just sit and be yes, and allow that healing yes. process to take place because Absolutely. we are people, we lives, our lives, things are going on around us. The world, things are going on around us all the time. There's all kinds of you know, energy fields coming at us, information, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And we have to be intentional about sitting and allowing ourselves to heal. Absolutely. And Absolutely. it's so, so important. important. So I can't and, stress it enough. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I, I just see that you've learned so much since the last time we really talked. <laughs> I, this is the first time where you really have given me this full story. And I've been praying for you the whole time. And, you, you know, thoughts have been coming to my mind about you and, and how you're doing and healing and all that. 
And um, wow, you, you've, what an amazing story. And I know it's not over yet. And of course it won't be, it's like a ripple effect. Yes, you know, I, I, I love my walks on the trail and down by the river. And um, I, the one of my favorite things to see is when there are these circles in the river or in the little part that mm. separates it from the main part of the river, um, almost like a creek alongside the river is if something drops in or if there's a bug or I there's fish underneath the bubbles, whatever there are absolutely perfect circles or at least they look like they are to me and they ripple out ripple out ripple out and then I watch another one come along and they just kind of keep rippling on and on and on it never ends it goes on for eternity and I'm thinking you know so this thing that you've gone through that you're going through it's not going to end it might, it's going to change form. It's going to um, progress in the future to something else that's going to ripple and touch other lives. And um, so I'm very grateful that you've shared your story and we'll do a, a, an update as we go, as you go through your next phase and be able to share what else you have learned. Um, again, in order to bring hope to other people and, um, just thank you for being who you are and for persevering and for, and for sharing with us and teaching us not only the, the, you know, the knowledge of the, the emergency prep and the medical things, the CPR, pet first, all that stuff. Um, but for sharing with us the mindset that we need and um, your own personal experiences. I really do appreciate you, brother. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you for years, you know. And um, so let's let's keep doing what what we're doing, what we're supposed to do. Amen. And Amen. Um, yeah. And so everybody just uh, comment below, you know, uh, like, subscribe, share, you know, all that. And um, get this out to somebody who could really benefit from it and check out our website. I'll put all that information below worldwide Academy training services. And also my, um, my channel, the sound where uh, we're bringing stories like this, hope, inspiration, um, perseverance, overcomers, Thurston, you are an overcomer, not just with this area of your life, but I've known you for a long time and you're an overcomer. And I Thank believe you, we are just <laughs> I believe we are moving into a new phase of moving past overcoming. Yes, and yes. we'll talk about that sometime. But um I'll put some links below. Everybody, check out our, our Facebook pages and Instagram, all that st fun stuff. So anyway, thanks for joining us. I really hope that you um really do get something out of this. And we'll see you next time. Ciao.